Question 8 shows us a stress against strain graph for a sample of a ductile material and it asks us to determine the Young modulus of the material. The Young modulus of material is calculated by dividing stress by strain. In this case that will be the gradient of the graph during this linear region here. So we can calculate this gradient by drawing a line across to the y-axis and down to the x-axis. This gives us a stress of 1.5 times 10 to the power of 9, because we're measuring in gigapascals here, divided by 0.8%, which is the same as saying 0.008, which gives us a Young modulus of 1.88 times 10 to the power of 11 pascals. Part 2 asks us to describe the behaviour of the material in these two sections here, from A to B and from B to C. Well, in A to B we have a straight line which tells us that Hooke's law is being obeyed, so we have elastic behaviour. In section BC, you can see that Hooke's law is no longer being obeyed, stress is no longer proportional to strain, so therefore we can say that this is plastic deformation. Part 3 asks us to state and explain the effect on the linear section AB of the graph when a sample of the same y but of twice the original length is used. Well, the Young modulus of a wire is independent of the length. The length doesn't affect it, so therefore the gradient shouldn't be affected either. So we're going to say no change to the graph because the Young modulus is unchanged due to being independent of length. And finally part B shows us a force extension graph for an elastic material. The work done on this material during load loading is equal to the energy returned by the material when the load is removed. It also shows us figure 8.3 here, which is the extension against force graph for a material used to make aeroplane tyres, which experience sudden impacts during landing. You can see the difference here is that the loading and unloading sections of the graph are different. There is a lower force exerted during the, the unloading stage as the extension goes back to zero. So we need to identify the type of material that's used from figure 8.3 and then describe the properties of the material and suggest why it's suitable for aeroplane tyres. This graph is a very common graph that we need to know and it is a polymer. Something like rubber, for example. The properties of the material. Now to understand the properties of the material we need to look carefully at this graph. The area underneath a force extension graph is equal to work done. Now we can see here that this blue shaded area is, is much greater than the area of this red shaded area during the unloading phase. So in other words, more energy is taken in during the loading stage, that is when the tyres hit the tarmac, than is returned to the aeroplane during the unloading stage as the tyres return to their original shape. So the tyres are themselves absorbing some energy uh, which would be converted to heat. So we need to describe this work done In loading greater than work done unloading therefore energy is absorbed and converted to heat Why is this useful? Well, it means that the tyres will bounce much less. Uh, in comparison to 
uh, material similar to this from figure 